Hey guys, today I'm sharing with you my lemon sponge cake recipe. This recipe is amazing. It is lemony, it is soft and spongy, and it is a blessing. So grateful and thankful for these amazing recipes, and let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, I wanna thank Bear for sending this hand mixer. This thing is amazing. It is such great quality. It is heavy duty, and it is just stainless steel. The attachments are amazing. I absolutely love the, um, the little storage base that it comes with. It is so adorable, and it is just about the size of my hand. It's small, but it is powerful. It works really well, and for the price, it is amazing. I will have their link down below in the description box, but I highly recommend this, guys. I don't usually recommend products like this on my channel, but this one definitely is good. The bowl that you're using for your whites is what you're going to crack first. Drop it like that. What I find the easiest way to separate is just take it in your hands and use your fingers just to, just to do that. That's the easiest way that I have found to separate the egg. So, this is kind of difficult having out there. Just let the, the white run through your fingers until that's all out, and then just plop the yolk in there. Yeah, I'm just seeing all this stuff here. So, for egg. Four egg whites here in this bowl. So we've gone ahead and separated our egg whites and our egg yolks. Um, this is four large egg whites. And I'm going to go ahead and use my mixer to just take about two to three minutes to beat this until stiff peaks. When we reach stiff peaks, I'm going to show you what my little next step is to ensure that we have absolute stiff peaks. So I'm going to go ahead and just mix this on about medium low speed or so just for about two to three minutes and show you guys the next step. My peaks are holding up lovely here. Now this point, when you reach stiff peaks like this here, where it's holding up, I'm gonna take an extra 30 seconds to 45 seconds and mix this to make sure that our yolks, our eggs don't move around. What happens is even when you reach the stiff peaks, there's usually a little bit of egg white left at the bottom, which does not get mixed in. So you really wanna take, a, even though it looks like stiff peaks and it's really nice and firm, we wanna make sure and take that extra 30 to 45 seconds to really mix it in to make sure that it is like unmovable egg whites. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. It is unmovable. It is unshakable. If I turn this upside down, it is not going to fall. You see that? Because you really, you've really taken that extra little bit of time to mix this in. And that's why having a good hand mixer is also a great thing for mixing egg whites because the standing mixer, to me, I can't really just move around these little attachments to where I want to make sure that all of that egg white is getting incorporated. So we're going to set this aside. Now while it's setting, while we're working with the rest of the cake, it will deflate a little bit and that's fine. But just for now, it's not like we're making macarons or anything. So in a large mixing bowl, I have one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar, a quarter cup of brown sugar, and some unsalted butter. You're gonna need one cup of softened unsalted butter, which is two sticks. You want it to be nice and soft at room temperature and we're gonna go ahead and mix this for about five to eight minutes you really want to take the time for five to eight minutes and mix this so it becomes one now one thing that I really really love about this mixer is it's flat bottom of the attachments it really gets everything on the bottom of the bowl as you can see there you can see the bottom of my bowl 
and these flat attachments, which makes it so much easier because normally attachments are usually curved and it makes it hard to get everything off the bottom mixed in. So it really is, truly it is an amazing mixer. So I'm gonna mix this for about five to eight minutes until really nice and smooth. And I am gonna come in every few minutes or so and scrape the sides of the bowl. And you can already see how it's turning into this beautiful, fluffy paste of butter and sugar goodness. It's just perfection. We're gonna add two tablespoons of vanilla extract and about a half a teaspoon of almond extract. The almond extract is uh, optional. And if you have lemon extract, you can use a half a teaspoon of that as well. Yes, two tablespoons of vanilla extract because please tell me what a half teaspoon of vanilla extract does. It does nothing. You really want some flavor. Okay, give it to two tablespoons, get the flavor. Oh, and then we're gonna zest in a half a tablespoon of lemon zest. I will have all the amounts listed below, but a half a tablespoon of lemon zest. Mix that in. Now we're gonna go ahead and scrape off the sides. Make sure you're getting all the vanilla and lemon and everything. And we're gonna add in our egg yolks one at a time and mix it in for about 30 seconds each. Mix that in. All right, so I've added in all of my egg yolks here. I'm giving that a nice mix to make sure everything is incorporated. And what I also love about this mixer is I can just leave it right there in the stand. The stand is washable, so I can just, if I get anything on it, I can just pop it to wash. And it's just so easy, convenient. It's tiny, so it's perfect for storage. Now I have my dry ingredients here. I have two cups of cake flour, three teaspoons of baking powder and about a half a teaspoon of salt. I am using cake flour. It comes in a box and you can find it in the aisle where you get your flour. If you don't have cake flour, you can obviously, of course, just use all purpose flour. However, cake flour is going to give you a lighter cake. We are going to need three quarter cups of whole milk and I'm going to alternate between my dry and my wet ingredients. I'm gonna add in a third of my dry ingredients and a third of my milk and then give that a mix with a spatula just until mostly incorporated. You don't wanna use any mixer for this, whether it's a stand mixer or your hand mixer because you don't wanna overwork your flour. So just until it's mostly mixed in, I'm gonna add in my next third and my next third of my milk until that is also mostly mixed in. Now this is a lemon cake and we will be adding lemon juice. The reason I add my lemon juice after all of this is because the lemon juice will react with the baking powder. The baking powder does have baking soda in it and it will kind of decrease that leavening agent. So if we added the lemon juice too early, your cake is not going to rise. So at this point, I have a quarter cup of lemon juice and I'm gonna run this through a sieve to make sure that I catch all of the seeds. This is freshly squeezed lemon juice from the lemons that I zested in. So I add this in after my milk so it does not get a lot of chance to react with that baking powder because it will just decrease that um, your rise in the cake and you don't want that you want a nice light fluffy cake. So after we've mixed that in I'm gonna add in a third of my egg whites and we're gonna fold that in going around the sides and then down through the center once that's mostly mixed in I'm gonna go ahead and fold in my second third, and then my last third, and so on. Now 
My oven is preheated to 350 degrees. You want to make sure that your oven is nice and preheated and ready to go because you don't want this cake sitting there with that lemon juice and that baking powder and all of that. No, no. So make sure that your oven is ready to go and just make sure that that is nice and mixed in. All right. So now we have a large cake pan here and I'm going to go ahead and rub about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of butter all around the bottom all around the edges and the sides of the pan. It is very important that it is well buttered so that it does not stick. After I have rubbed butter everywhere, I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of flour and then we're gonna shake that flour all around the bottom, the sides, the edges, and everywhere. Every, everywhere. We don't want our cake to stick. And using the butter and the flour method at the bottom instead of like parchment, gives it a really lovely crust. Mmm, just so good, I love it. Probably one of my favorite parts of the cake is the crust. I don't know, that's just me. Add that in, make sure it is nice and even. And we're gonna pop this in the oven and it's gonna bake for about 45 to 50 minutes. Give it a couple gentle taps so that any extra air bubbles can pop. And it's going to bake for 45 to 50 minutes until nice and golden on the top. It's going to start to pull away from the edges. And oh my goodness, it's going to be so good. Now you want this to cool for a little bit before you invert it and place it onto your other your platter, whatever you're serving it with. Or you can just leave it on the pan and just cut it. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do, you do you. But that's it. I'm going to let it cool for a little bit. You can see how it's perfectly just coming off the edges there. Now I bake this in one large cake pan. I will have the size of the cake pan down in the description box because I haven't checked to be honest with you. I haven't checked yet. So I'll have that below in the description box. And it took 45 to 50 minutes. It actually took 48 minutes for me. If you're using smaller cake pans, it's going to bake in a less, it's gonna take a lot less time. If you're baking it in a loaf pan, it's also gonna take less. It depends on the size of pan you're using. You just wanna look for a nice golden brown crust, no jiggly in the middle, and you want to, you will start seeing it pulling away from the sides. That's your indication that your cake is done. All right, so even though my cake is pulled off the side, I'm just gonna take a knife and gently, gently, go around the edges just to make sure that when we flip this that nothing sticks and I'm getting all the way down to the bottom. Now a lot of lemon cakes like to have a glaze on top so I have some powdered sugar, I've added in a little bit of almond extract and I'm adding in some freshly squeezed lemon juice. Now this is completely optional because the cake it has great flavor and it's already sweet as it is but I will have this below in the description box. If you'd like to make a glaze, go ahead and uh, place a nice tray over it and um, just to flip your cake, give it some taps on the bottom and just get your cake out of there and this is amazing. I can't say enough how much of a blessing it is, how grateful, how thankful I am for these recipes. My family loves it. I love to make it for them and I hope that you guys enjoy it as well. This cake is super soft, it is super spongy and it is just has a lot of flavor. I will have all the amounts listed below in the description box. Go ahead and put some of the glaze on top of it if you'd like. The glaze will solidify and create a nice crust. To me, the cake is sweet enough, but you can do whatever you want to do with it. It's your cake. I want to thank Beer for sending this hand mixer again. I will have the link below in the description box. It really is a great hand mixer for the price. If you look at other brands that are just more popular, this is just as great quality. It's heavy duty. It's so cute and functional. It's tiny for storage and it's amazing. I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.